Hello everyone, I'm Steve, W9SN. And in this video I'm going to show you how I rebuilt a four element stepper that was damaged by lightning. So what we're looking at here is some of the new EHUs and some old ones. And you'll see that the new EHUs have black shafts in them and I'm going to call these sprockets. This is what drives the copper beryllium tape in and out of the uh, of the EHU. You'll also notice here at the bottom of this that it has an actual bolt that runs through it. And these are made of black plastic or some some black material. I'm not really sure what it is. The older EHUs have kind of a greenish grayish color and there are sprockets inside there were made of a light gray plastic or some material and these had a tendency to shatter and here we're looking at one that that that's exactly what happened to it it had broken off there at the bottom and uh, it won't drive the the tapes in or out of the uh, of the EHU Here's another one here. It's a driven element from the same antenna and it also had a broken shaft in it. And I'll take this out of here so you can see it. You can see it's completely shattered off the bottom and cracked. These also had a roll pin that was driven into these instead of having the bolt like the newer ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a couple of good motors out of an old stepper and replace the lightning damaged ones in the new stepper. So here is our boom from the four element stepper. It's a 36 foot boom. It also has the 40 meter return bracket on it which I've just not used. Here's a couple of the elements these were damaged and this is where it's going to go is on top of my 80 foot heights aluminum motorized fold over tower and I'll show you later in the video how we're going to install it on that tower looking at the um, EHUs and the fiberglass you can see this has been out in the sun for a while the bottom of this is covered uh, or, or actually has some pretty good coloring to it but the top of it where the sun has been hitting it is faded very badly and you'll see some of the webbing coming through I'll take you over here and you'll see um, some pretty good damage to it you can feel it and see it so we're going to uh, repaint these and uh, and make them like new again and it'll be amazing what happens to this once it's all uh, all covered back up the element tapes are still driven out in here so we got to pull them back in when we take it apart here's the old tips off the ends of the elements they were um, a let things crawl in the end of them and plug it up here's the new ones they have a stainless screen and a foam inside and there's a new sprocket we're going to uh, we're going to have as a spare and here's our connection box this will go at the center of the tower and it's a new one. The old one was damaged heavily in lightning. It uh, completely disintegrated where the uh, lightning had uh, come up through the bottom cable from the house and traveled up to it. And there's some dielectric grease that we'll use on the ends of the copper wire on the new cable that we're uh, going to put up with it. Here's the paint we're going to use. It is Rust-Oleum Topside. This is made for boats. It's a marine paint. Uh, made for outdoors, no uh, carbon in it, and this will be a, a really good fit for the uh, for the stepper. And I decided to go with a navy blue color instead of the green. So here is the old motor, and we're going to pull these bolts out. We're going to remove this motor out of here, and the two screws that hold in the coax connector. This is the driven unit of the uh, EHU or element housing unit, as they call it. So 
we've cut it apart and we've taken it out and uh, now we need to remove these two screws here to uh, remove the uh, uh, this top plate off of there so that we can get to the bolts that or the four screws that hold the motor itself onto this plate and these are in there kind of tight so you'll have to kind of work at getting these out of there this this is a very tight fit you uh, need some small tools to get in there and they uh, they put it together well so after the bolts are moved this can pop off of there and you'll see four screws that hold the motor itself onto the plate and those will come out then the motor will be free now we're going to have to drive this pin out of here so the easiest way to do this is to support the shaft and we're going to drive the roll pin out. So you want to lay this on something solid so that you don't damage the shaft into the motor. Drive it out and then I use a brad nail to finish punching it through. Seems to be the easiest way to get this out of there. So now let's look at the newer housing that we're going to dismantle so that we can get to the motor. First we have to take what we call the egg pieces off the ends of the tape and then there'll be three bolts that come out so let's go ahead and dismantle this the nylon washer and um, keyway will have to come out so now we want to once we remove the eggs we want to slowly back out the tape so that it uh, doesn't release and unwind in there this is these are these rolls are spring loaded so we just want to back them out a little bit and kind of keep this in place so that we can remove this without it becoming a mess. Now we've taken it apart. We've re-spooled our copper tape, um, uh, removed them, and we've taped them around so that they won't unspool on us. We've changed the motor out, and now what we're doing is putting the spools onto the shaft. It's got a slot in the middle of the shaft and there is a sp the spring tensioner is inside the spool a little hard to see in the video and that has to be worked down inside the uh, inside that shaft and it's a little hard to get that in there I had to work it a little bit but you'll get it through there and I use a needle nose plier sometimes to get it where I want it hold it in place sometimes I use a little screwdriver but eventually I'll win and it'll uh, just get in there and drop down over that shaft and then we'll put our nylon washer and our keyway on it's about 95 degrees and I'm sitting outside by the pool doing this so uh, I'm sitting here in a bathing suit doing this so you can see that these two spools are somewhat spring-loaded here um, there's there's no tension on them yet but we're going to put tension on these the other thing is that the tape the copper tape is sticking out a little bit so I need to retape these a little bit and get these tighter against the spool so I can spin these around and put tension on them so we're going to take them down and make them a little tighter against the spool to make room Now she'll spin fairly freely inside there and you can see they're, they're spring loaded and we're going to spin this counterclockwise about 10 turns and that'll put tension on here. Both spools have to be spun together and at simultaneously and uh, you want to keep them together as you do this so it takes two hands to, uh, to turn this around.
and now I'm going to remove the tape that held those in because now we're going to fish this through the, the bottom part of the motor here and you want to be careful not to let go because I've got 10 turns on here and this now is spring loaded uh, fairly tight and it will definitely get away from you again two hands on it and slowly carefully back the tape out and run them together simultaneously through there the top one goes in the top sprocket the bottom tape goes into the bottom sprocket and as I get them in here they're gonna catch so we have to fish them out you can see right there it's it's now catching so we'll fish these out of here and get it to where it slides through little screwdriver will work and it'll lift it up just slightly get it over the edge of that plastic and now it's got to be lifted up to go over these little prongs that touch these and now we've got it over there and we just want to get this just past the end of the black plastic once we do that we want to tape this whole thing so that it doesn't go away uh, get away from us and we can continue working on this without having to hold this so I take about three or four turns around this spool and that'll that'll hold it in place if you just tape it fairly tight and snug now we put on our white plastic cover on the outside of this and it takes some little screws to do this now these screws are hard to get in and out they're very small I think they're a number four uh, stainless and they've got a, a lock washer on the back side and it's recessed in so it's very hard to get these in there if you've got unless you have very tiny hands it's very hard to get these in there the one on the bottom is the most difficult and really it, it takes a pair of needle nose pliers to hold it in place uh, at least for me it does the circuit board there with the connector on it is actually in the way I've in in the past I've removed those before um, I just thought I could probably get this in there without having to remove it and I was able to now you want to get this tight and snug you also want to make sure that the tape is free inside there because there's a slot that runs through the the middle of the black and and where the white plastic meets and you want to make sure this is you know tight once that's done then we want to test to make sure that we're still free with the copper tape so they they still slide freely inside the uh, the slot one time I uh, didn't have them that way and I had to take it apart so you can see there they're sliding through there pretty easily the tape is what's really holding it so I can't move it much but they do spin free so now we're going to mount the board with the tape and everything in place inside the housing and there's a there's a cable coming out of the motor so that's got to be placed where it doesn't pinch and uh, doesn't get in the way mount your three housing bolts through there and the bolts should line up so now that the board is all mounted up we're going to go ahead and cut the tape off and remove it and you have to kind of fight to get the tape out of there a little bit because it's going to be underneath the board but you want to hold your hand on the gear on the sprocket so that these don't get away while at the same time go ahead and fish the tape through the fiberglass tube the top one will go to the left the bottom one will go to the right 
and there's just a very small place for them to go in there so I'm spinning the sprocket to feed them through there simultaneously and they'll eventually come out the ends and there they are. Once they're outside the ends then we'll take our little egg plastic um, I call them eggs but they'll they'll snap on the ends of the fiberglass. Now, a lot of guys will take some kind of adhesive or or glue. I'm just going to snap them on there for now for testing. Make sure that uh, we want to test this motor. Make sure that it retracts and and uh, and goes forward. So I'll just snug them up with a small pair of pliers for now and make sure that they stay. while we do our tests on it. And we want to make sure that everything is free and there's nothing in the way. And we want to get our tape out of there. Completely remove it. So now the, uh, the, co the copper tape should just pull out freely and you'll see it unspool. And then we can spin the spool and pull it back in. So let's go ahead and hook up our cable. And we're going to hook it up to the back of the controller directly, just the table right on there. So let's go ahead and drive it out. We've temporarily just put our fiberglass tubes into the EHU. And you can see the motor is now driving the tape out of there. And it looks really good. So what we want to do is go ahead and drive it on 20 meters to get it fully extended out. And once that is done, then we're going to retract it and make sure it goes in and then pull it back out again. We're going to do this a cycle uh, through this a couple of times because we want to make sure that it's going to work well. and it looks like we have a winner here. It's uh, retracting and, uh, and pushing the tape out. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to lower the tower over. Now the tower doesn't have anything on it right now. It's just an empty tower that I went ahead and removed everything off of it including the rotor. And we're going to move the rotor plate um, so the first thing we have to do is is lower it down. This is motor driven with an Acme screw and it's made by a tower company in Pensacola, Florida. Once the tower is laid over, I have now attached the rotor, moved the plate, put the mass pipe in, the thrust bearing, all about four feet off the ground, which is really nice. I've also attached the NN4ZZ NN4 tilt plate mounted the boom to it. There is our control or um, connector box and this is how it works when it stands vertical that hinge will allow this to go back on itself so the boom is actually pinched between the mounting plate and the back bracket or the back plate and as it lowers over it allows the the antenna to go horizontal. So now I've mounted all of the fiberglass tubes in, the Fernco's uh, couplers, and I've taped them um, that makes them last longer. I've also put tape on the control wire coming out of the EHUs, and I like to run my wire underneath the boom, um, protects it somewhat from the sun, and you can see that all the cables come to the junction box here on the center, which is now firmly mounted to the tilt plate. So as the antenna comes over, that comes with it. And we have a nice navy blue looking stepper fiberglass tubes. The antenna, the whole weight of the antenna is really resting on the mass pipe, which is resting on the tower. And the tower is actually holding all of this up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to mount a couple more antennas on here before we raise it back up in the air. But so far it looks good. We've got a, a boom truss on it, bolted up, 
and tensioned. So here's looking at the base of the tower and let's walk down to the end. I've mounted uh, four ropes to pull up. Going through a pulley at the top of the tower, these will be about 80 feet up. And this will allow me to pull up, um, I'm thinking of like a wire four square or wire dipole as a phased array on 40 meters. Here is our loop, our coax loop at the top. And the next antenna up is a homebrew 30 meter rotatable dipole. It's homebrew. And I've got a 1 to 1 ballon right there in the middle. This thing works really well. I've also got a 5 element 6 meter beam on about a 16 foot boom, all homebrew as well. And the, uh, the driven element is actually kind of touching the ground right now. It's, uh, the ground's a little high right there in that one spot. So it, 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 they basically touch the ground. Uh, but it's low enough that I can work on everything and stand up. There's the top of the fold-over plate. And here we are raising the antenna the next morning. And it's a slow, it's a slow lift. This, uh, this motor rotates an Acme screw, which pulls the tower up. And this takes 11 minutes to do, so it's a, it's kind of a slow process, but it's it's slow, but it's very sure. You can see my extra ropes right there at the bottom of the tower, and I've got extra cables just laying there. I'll dress those up once the tower is completely vertical, and uh, we get that done. But uh, it's a nice tower. It's very heavy duty. It's uh, very thick. And about nine minutes later, you can see that she's almost vertical now. And the tilt plate is tilting back towards the mast. And what happens is this heights tower pulls the, uh, the top part down onto the base. And those two holes are there at the bottom will line up and then we pin it. It's kind of an ingenious method here, but it makes uh, makes for a light duty work. And uh, one person can lower over a very large antenna, work on it, and raise it up all in an afternoon by himself. You can see some of my grease on the Acme screw. I keep it greased as it goes up and as it goes down. There's our holes lining up. It uh, takes a solid one inch bolt that goes through there that, that will hold it. And now that she's up, she is working. And let's go take a look and see what she looks like all in the air. I'm basically on top of a small Tennessee mountain here in the near the Smokies. And there's the four element stepper and a 30 meter dipole and the six meter five element. Uh, that's a little over 90 feet above the base of the tower. Now the whole tower sits on a ridge that's about 150 feet above the valley below. You really can't see it right now because of the the tree coverage, but it's sitting right on the edge of a ridge. That's a that's a pretty steep drop off right there. Uh, just past it. The tower looks good. Everything is square and straight and it's easy to do when it's on the ground and you can work on it. So it's, uh, it's a very nice tower to have. The stepper antenna works quite well. I've been very happy with it. A um, few little problems but uh, with a fold over tower it makes uh, very light work. So thanks for watching everyone, and if you like what I've done, uh, be sure to subscribe and to like the video, and I'll be sure to make some more ham radio videos. 73s for now, from Whiskey 9, Sugar November.